it is increasingly obvious that a lot of progressives who dwell on social media don't actually understand how small businesses work. The solution from MSNBC anchors to your average Twitter troll to the labor shortage problem in this country is that, well, the private sector just needs to raise wage rates and they will be able to compete against unemployment. But we're not in a free market situation. The government of the United States is using taxpayer dollars to make unemployment competitive to employment. That's not a free market situation. The free market can't compete against the government's use of taxpayer dollars to drive up the cost of uh, the benefit of unemployment and drive up the cost of wages. Not only that, I don't know that they understand how this works. A, a Fortune 500 company, like I pointed this out on social media, people are like, well, stop paying the CEO a million dollars. We're not talking about the Fortune 500 here. We're talking about Main Street. We're talking about the, the, the non-chain restaurant. Wages account for a significant portion of a small business overhead. Because it's not just the wages that an employer pays. They're not just paying you. They're also having to pay unemployment insurance. They're also having to pay Social Security, Medicare, FICA. They've, they've got all sorts of payments that they have to make in addition to your wage. So what they pay you is actually they're paying more because they've hired you. So you may only get seven fifty an hour, $10 an hour, but they're actually paying more than that per hour. And I don't think the left understands that. Not only that, they want a one-size-fits-all program, and not everywhere in the country needs $15, $20 an hour. Because of the cost of living in some parts of the country, they don't. And every part of the country is affected by this right now. We are paying people more to stay on the sidelines than we are paying people to go to work. The federal government is using your tax dollars and my tax dollars to distort the labor market. Private businesses can't compete against that. It's not fair to them. It shows a great disdain for the small business. Can you imagine the black or Hispanic business owner who's being lectured by white people telling them, well, just raise the amount you're willing to pay for labor? when they're competing against uh, these white people in Washington, making unemployment more attractive. By the way, Joe Biden is finally walking back some of his statements. You know, the other day, Joe Biden said this. President, do you believe enhanced unemployment benefits had any effect on diminishing a return to work in some categories? No, nothing measurable. Nothing measurable. Now he's saying this. Third, the employers bring back laid off workers to help them do that. We're going to remind them that there is some progress they can take advantage of, some programs they can take advantage of. For example, employers can hire back their laid-off workers part-time without those workers having to give up all their unemployment benefits. <laughs> okay. Uh, and there's also this. Take the job or lose their unemployment benefits. There are a few COVID-19-related exceptions. So the people aren't forced to choose between their basic safety and a paycheck. But otherwise, that's the law. I know there's been a lot of discussion since Friday, since Friday's report, that people are being paid to stay home rather than go to work. Well, we don't see much evidence of that. That is a major factor. We we don't see that. that, Look, it's easy to say the, the line has been because of the generous unemployment benefits, that it's a major factor in labor shortages. Americans want to work. Americans want to work. As my dad used to say, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity, your place in the community, being able to look your kid in the eye and say everything's going to be okay. Now, I know Joe Biden says that, but but notice what he's also saying. He's trying to say two things at once, uh, that it's not impacting people, the unemployment rate or the the unemployment benefit isn't impacting jobs, but also 
if you get offered a job, you've got to take it with few exceptions. What the Biden administration is doing with this unemployment situation is very much like what they're doing with the border. They're saying there's no problem there, but then they're also acknowledging that they've got to do something to fix a problem that they refuse to acknowledge, which is just breeding cynicism about uh, the way the White House is operating. Here's from the Wall Street Journal. The number of available jobs grew in April as the pace of hiring slowed, pointing to a widening gap between employers' unfilled positions and available workers. Job postings at the end of April were 24% higher than February 2020's pre-pandemic level, according to job search site Indeed.com. Openings at the end of March were 16% above pre-pandemic levels, Indeed added. The growth in available jobs came as hiring cooled to a seasonally adjusted 266,000 in April from a gain of 770,000 the prior month, according to the Labor Department. Employees are looking, employers are looking to hire, but temporary factors are making people a little hesitant to take a job. The growing number of available jobs shows how difficult it is turning openings into hires. Many economists say a number of factors, including expanded unemployment benefits, are keeping workers from taking jobs. Also, lack of childcare because schools are closed and risk of contracting COVID, which is going down. Uh, Mississippi is joining South Carolina, Florida, and Montana in scrapping the federal unemployment benefit. Governor Tate Reeves uh, says unemployed Mississippians will no longer be eligible for the $300 per week in federal COVID-19 unemployment benefits. It has become clear to me that we cannot have full economic recovery until we get the thousands of available jobs in our state filled. Since last week, governors in Montana, South Carolina, Arkansas, and Alabama have announced the end to it. Ron DeSantis in Florida is also going to do it, and now Mississippi joins them, and now even Georgia is considering it. Governor Brian Kemp in Georgia says he's open to the possibility of slashing jobless benefits in Georgia, putting the state in line to join others canceling the extra 300 a week in weekly payments that millions of Americans receive on top of their unemployment checks. The governor and labor commissioner, Mark Butler, met on Monday and agreed changes are needed in order to support employers who continue to see worker shortages, according to a spokeswoman. She added that the final decision on timing and other specifics would be announced soon. Growing movement uh, among these states to do it. Business leaders are also sounding the alarm. More than a dozen groups that advocate for Georgia's businesses called on officials to end the subsidy. The Georgia Chamber of Commerce, the Georgia Farm Bureau, and the Georgia Association of Manufacturers said it's got to go. In an op-ed circulated Monday, the business groups said that many companies have raised wages and offered incentives, flexibility, and benefits, but are still struggling to find workers. And then the New York Times has this. Dog head... Dogfish Head Craft Brewery is struggling to hire manufacturing workers for its beer factory and staff members for its restaurant in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. A shortage that has grown so acute, the company has cut dining room hours and is now offering vintage cases of its 120-minute India Pale Ale as a signing bonus to new hires. The company is using its hefty social media presence to get the bat signal out and entice beverage-loving adults to join the team. Sam Calagnon, the company's founder, said on a steamy afternoon this month at Dogfish's Brew Pub, which was already doing brisk business ahead of vacation season. Yet as they race to hire before an expected summertime economic boom, employers are voicing a complaint that has echoed all the way to the White House. They can't find enough workers to fill their open positions and meet rising customer demand. Some blame expanded unemployment benefits. President Biden says there's no evidence that the benefit is doing it, but now even the Biden administration is starting to consider maybe it's got to end it earlier than September. Barry Loudermilk, a congressman from Georgia, has announced he is going to offer up legislation to shut down the unemployment benefit. Barry Loudermilk believes that it is probably time to go uh, and get rid of it. And all of them are expressing a lot of frustration is that they can't compete with the government who is paying people more to stay at home and not work than they can afford to actually pay them to come and work. 
And they're starting to see this even not just in their own businesses, but, you know, look at lumber prices, 200% higher than they were a year ago. And a lot of that is because you can't, there's a shortage of employees from the sawmills to the distribution centers, to the truck drivers, all the way to, I mean, Lowe's just announced they were hiring a thousand people in the Atlanta area just over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see a supply chain issue. And a lot of it is because people are just staying at home because the government's paying them sale. One more from Barry Loudermilk, Congressman from Georgia. Once you start a big spending government program, it's almost impossible to stop it, no matter how bad it is. But I hope that there'll be enough pressure from the people back home. And uh, look, I'm getting it even from employees who are frustrated because they're working 12, and some of the construction industry are working 16 hours a day. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm hearing this from employers all over the place. They can't get previous employees to even come back to work because of the benefit. And the left is in denial. They're, they're willfully saying this isn't so. And they're willfully saying, well, these people, they just need to raise wages. Well, you can't compete against the federal government using taxpayer dollars to distort the market. Just to recap, the Federal Reserve has done a study now with the University of Pennsylvania that there, for every 10% increase in jobless benefits, there's a 3% decline in the number of jobs applied for. Likewise, the University of Chicago Harris School showed a uh, decrease in the inclination to search for jobs due to the unemployment benefit. And yet the government is in complete denial about this when even the Federal Reserve is saying it. The Chamber of Commerce, the American Association of Manufacturers, the National Association of Manufacturers, local businesses around the country, they're all finding it. And this is the thing. Anecdote is not data. But at some point, the constant level of anecdote does become data. And that in and of itself uh, is no... Longer.